The public lecture that this video will cover is the last of the public lectures for this semester on November 30th, focused on the physics of breakfast by Professor Peter Junker of Georgia Tech School of Physics. Professor Junker discussed how physics is all around us and stressed the importance of understanding the basic physics of simple systems because it can be used in other more complicated industrial systems and situations. He focused on three main parts of breakfast for this lecture. The physics behind the phenomenons of the coffee ring effect, eggs hardening when cooked and scrambled, and Cheerios sticking together in a bowl of cereal. I was unaware of the physics behind the phenomenons presented in this lecture, but I will try to focus on the one that caught my interest the most, the coffee ring effect. This lecture was of special interest to myself, because when I was younger I would love to make paper appear older and more worn by pouring coffee on it and burning the edges of it with a lighter. I was fascinated by the way the coffee stains would be darker on the edge and give the paper in the middle of the stain a much more worn and old feel. I've noticed the effect many times throughout my life, but I've never known how or why it happened. Professor Junker elaborated in great detail, explaining to me, and all the others present at the lecture, the exact physics that go into this seemingly strange occurrence. He started by explaining what the coffee actually was, which I found a little humorous at first, because I think it's safe to say that most of the college students were fairly acclimated with the wonder of coffee by now. But when he said that there was a mix of oil and water, I started to get a little bit more intrigued. I knew that oil and water did not mix, so he grabbed my attention with that, but went on to explain that the oils in the coffee were mostly water-soluble, so they did in fact mix. I knew that there were small particles that were mixed in as well, but I didn't quite understand how knowing that caused the ring effect. This happens because of the surface tension of the mixture. There is a natural desire to minimize surface area. When a drop is put on a surface, there, there is adhesion to keep the drop where it is. The molecules on the outside of the drop want to be surrounded by more molecules and attract more towards them. The combination of the adhesion of the molecules and the surf of the, the combination of the adhesion of the molecules and the surface and the cohesion between the molecules themselves create a spherical cap. The edge of the drop are pinned, and therefore when it evaporates, the diameter remains the same. The edges dry at the end, and the fluid from the middle flows to the edges to balance this. This is why the edges appear darker. A really interesting application of this I found through further research is a bacteria discovered by researchers in Belgium that counteracts the coffee ring effect. Raf Didier and Wouter Semples from the Departments of Chemical Engineering and Chemistry carried out experiments and calculations on a particularly promising bacteria, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It's a dangerous bacterium that can cause infections and open wounds. A Pseudomonas aeruginosa bacteria colony wants to find as large a breeding ground as possible. To avoid overconcentration on the edges of a wound when spreading itself during the drying out process, the bacteria produces substances that counteract the coffee ring effect. These surface tension disrupting substances are called surficants. Detergents such as soaps are also surficants. If you add soap to a stain, you will get a coffee ring effect. But at the same time, the soap causes a counterflow from the edge back towards the center of the stain in a way that the small particles, material or bacteria, end up in a kind of whirlwind. In this way, you could get a more uniform distribution of particles as evaporation occurs. Surficants could also potentially be added to nanomaterials, and that makes Didier and Semple's findings interesting for all sorts of industries. Surfactants are inexpensive, and I don't think it'll be long before we start seeing them turn up in industrial applications.